You're very welcome here this evening to uh, what is uh, a joyous occasion. And uh, as I shared with parents in a text message earlier, what I believe to be a very significant occasion in the lives of our confirmation candidates. A wonderful opportunity for them to, in public, in front of their family and their friends, to affirm their faith and to take upon themselves those vows that were taken on their behalf as infants. Uh, so you are very welcome here today. I want to thank you all for being here to support the candidates. If you're a visitor here to Sego, you are especially welcome. And I suppose this is the part of the service where I get to do my airline steward bit. Uh, so I'll stand over here in the middle so the people over there can see me. If there's a fire, which we hope there won't be, the uh, exits are here, here, and here. I think there's another career calling for me, surely. Um, there won't be any issues this evening, but uh, just if there are, please uh, move calmly uh, and uh, as quickly and efficiently as you can to the, near, the nearest exit. Um, our bishop is going to be leading us through most of our service, uh, but I just wanted to have the opportunity to uh, say a few words of welcome. And, and just a thought, um, it's always dangerous when you hear a clergy person saying they're going to give a thought because you're thinking, am, am I going to get another sermon here? Uh, uh, this morning after church, as Neil and I, Neil was one of the, the folk along with Emma who helped us in our preparation for the confirmation candidates. As we were preparing for this evening and we were going through uh, the confirmation book, which is this big old book, boys and girls, that is 141 years old. Uh, the earliest entry was 1880. And there were lots of names in it. And I calculated there's probably close to 10,000 names. There's certainly thousands upon thousands of names in that book. People like you who sat in this church, uh, most of them as young people, a few adults as well, and who, are, who did the same thing that you're going to do later on in the service. And what a privilege it is for each one of us as we tell our stories to remember that we are part of God's story here in this place. So I'm excited for you, and I'm looking forward to later on in the service when you get that opportunity to make your, your vows in front of your family and friends. If you're new to us here in Sego, our service will be on the screen, and there will be moments in the service where the congregation uh, will be invited to respond, and your responses will be in yellow bold. But before we begin our service, let's just take a few moments in silent prayer to gather our thoughts and to prepare our hearts as we, we meet with one another and we meet with Almighty God. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. And I shared this morning the, the opportunity that we have as Anglicans in our worship services to come and to say sorry to God. I actually think this is probably one of the most important parts of our service uh, as we gather our thoughts, as we come to worship God, that we think about the things that we need to say sorry for so that we might be made right in His sight. So let us affirm our trust in God's mercy and confess that we need forgiveness. Lord God, You created the world and made us in your own image. Forgive us when we turn away from you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, through your Son, you overcame evil and death. Rescue us from slavery to sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord God, by your Spirit, you restore us to fellowship with you and with one another. Breathe your love and freedom into our lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so these words of God's forgiveness. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive your sins and keep you in eternal life. Amen. We're now going to stand as a congregation and sing. And our guidance that we have been offering to our parishioners as we have come uh, to worship as a congregation is to keep wearing masks and to sing gently, uh, but we do want to uh, use our voices uh, in praise to God in heaven. So we stand to sing hymn number 366, Praise My Soul. Oh, 
Now this is a really very special evening, very special evening for everyone that's in church tonight as a congregation. Uh, you are witnessing some young women and young men making their own profession of faith in Christ, saying that they're going to follow Jesus all the remaining years of their lives here on earth. Uh, and also been surrounded by family and by friends and uh, others that are maybe joining us. I'm not sure if we're online or not this evening, but if we are, then welcome to you as well, those of you who are joining us. This is a really special evening. For me, it's a privilege. Later on in the service, I'll come down and lay hands on each one of you and pray that God, by His Holy Spirit, will watch over your life that God, by His Holy Spirit, will fill your lives with His blessing, that you will increase in His Holy Spirit more and more and more, and that you will continue to love and follow Jesus all the days of your lives. Parents and others made these vows on your behalf years past, and now this evening you're making them your own. And that's a very, very special, and it's a very wonderful thing that you're doing tonight. And the rest of us are very proud of you in a, in a humble sort of way. We're delighted for you, and we're very pleased that you're making this choice to follow Jesus. We're thrilled that you're making this choice to follow Jesus. So as a congregation, simply let us bow our heads in prayer. Let us take a moment to be still in the presence of God, and to pray that God, in His love, would draw near to those who are being confirmed this night. So we pray for Amelia, for Matthew, for Rachel, for Ben, for Joyce, for Harry, for Joe, for Jackson, for Daniel, for Victoria, for Emily, for Rushing, and for Jamie. Let's in a moment's stillness hold these young persons before the Lord, praying that God will grant them everything 
that's good and true and holy, that comes from Him in life. Lord, thank you so much for these young men and young women. Thank you, Lord, for every influence for good that has been part of their life up until this moment. Continue, Lord, to keep them safe, we pray. Continue, Lord God, to protect them from darkness and from evil, we pray. Continue, Lord God, to pour into their lives your grace your mercy, your kindness, your goodness, your love, your comfort, your healing, your strength. Pour out upon them your Holy Spirit, we pray. Heavenly Father, by water and the Holy Spirit, you give your faithful people new life. Guide and strengthen us by that same Spirit, that we who are born again may serve you in faith and in love and grow into the full stature of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We remain seated for our Scripture reading, and Rachel is going to bring us our first reading from the Old Testament and then Hari, the New Testament reading. The reading is from Isaiah, chapter 58, beginning at verse 1. Cry aloud, do not hold back, Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their transgression, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that did righteousness, and did not forsake the judgment of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why have we fasted? and you see it not? Why have we humbled ourselves, and you take no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure and oppress all your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to hit with a wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice be heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day for a person to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a reed, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast, and a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bounds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke? to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and to bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked, to cover him, and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you, the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your minds, the pointing of the finger, and speaking wickedness, if you pour yourself out for the hungry, and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light raise in the darkness, and your gloom be as the noonday. And the Lord will guide you continually, and satisfy your desire in scorched places, and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, 
like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. And your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to dwell in. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading is from Matthew, chapter 5, beginning at verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but in a stand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And Lord, we pray that you would speak words of life into our lives, that you would draw near to us in these moments. And, Lord, that you would be our teacher. And, Lord, that every word that I speak would bring blessing to each and to all of us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a little phrase in the confirmation service that says this, that you will promise with your own mouth and from your own heart that you will follow Jesus all your life. You see, for those being confirmed up until this moment, uh, others had made these promises on your behalf. But in a real sense, in a very, very real sense, tonight, from your own lips, out of the very depths of your own life and heart, you're saying, yes, yes, yes. I'm going to follow Jesus. We're not saying to you that that that's going to be always straightforward or or easy. And, And that's why there will come a point in the service where I will pray that God will strengthen you with his Holy Spirit. And it's not just that you pray that prayer this evening and that that that's it for the rest of your life, but rather it's a little model of how we're to pray and ask God to strengthen us to give us his strength so that we would follow him all our days. So tonight you confirm, you confirm the vows that others made for you. And tonight as well you will be confirmed in that God will confirm in you that he loves you, that he's for you, and that he wants to strengthen on you. My prayer will be an earnest prayer that you will increase in the Holy Spirit more and more and more for all your days and throughout all of your life. That means that we're asking that God the Holy Spirit will fill your life with good blessings. We're asking that God the Holy Spirit will impart to you uh, spiritual gifts that will help you to live the Christian life and to follow him means that we're praying that God will give you strength to face temptation and to live your life close to him, that he'll keep you close to him, that you will find the strength in him to strive to be his follower, to be a real Christian, true Christian, all your days. We'll pray that God the Holy Spirit will fill your life more and more and more and more. Uh, and it's lovely that you're surrounded by family tonight and friends, but also a, a, a church family, this particular church congregation here in Sego that you're part of and that we uh, pray that you'll continue to be part of until you maybe join another church if you go off to university later or whatever that you'll find a church, a church family, 
wherever you go. Now, I've been saying something at all the different confirmations. So some of, some of the folks being confirmed were asking me earlier what a, what a diocese is. Well, a diocese is just a whole lot of churches in a geographical area. There's 111 uh, churches in this diocese. And I'm not doing a confirmation service in all of them uh, this year, but I am doing a confirmation service in quite a number of them. Uh, and I'm leaving this same little message everywhere I go that God invites us into what we are going to call the good life. The good life. The good life isn't necessarily an easy life, but it's a life that's good because Jesus is at the very heart of it. It's a life that, that's good because Jesus is at the very center of it. It's a life that's good because Jesus will lead you through it and be with you in it. And the second reading that was read there for us gives us some insights into that good life. Verse 13, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored. It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. Jesus compares this good life, this new life, uh, to being like salt. Now, salt has a peculiar taste. It has a particular taste, a taste all of its own, a taste that's not like any other taste. And salt gives taste to everything that it comes in contact with. You see, when Jesus is at the very center of our lives, our lives and every aspect of our lives have a new focus. Being a Christian is not just about an hour on a Sunday in church. That hour should strengthen us and help us to follow Jesus more closely. But actually following Jesus impacts every aspect of life in the same way if you put salt into the stew, it affects every aspect of the food that you're cooking with it. And so Jesus uses this example of salt. Being a Christian means that we are led out of a life of insignificance, a life that doesn't have much by way of distinction, into a life of worth, a life of real value, and a life of distinction, where every aspect of our lives is impacted. So folks who are being confirmed this evening, it's not just uh, that you become religious for an hour on a Sunday, but being a Christian impacts your life in your place of education. It will impact how you live as an employee or as an employer. Being a Christian will impact your life with your family, with parents, with uncles and aunts and grandparents. Being a Christian will impact your life as well on the sports field and what sort of sports person you are. Being a Christian, in other words, will impact every aspect of our living. Just like a salt gives flavor to everything that it comes in contact with, following Jesus is about living a blended life, a life that's impacted in every way. Salt changes the taste of everything. And following Jesus will change every aspect of your life. It will change every aspect of your life for good. When life's really, really challenging, you will find in Jesus a friend who will stay closer than any other when life is a party, you will find in Jesus someone who will help you to live that moment well and live that moment in a way that honors Christ, that honors those who love you, and that honors you as well. So I want to encourage you, I really want to encourage you to follow Jesus in every aspect of you're living. Now, each of you who are being confirmed will have a different story to tell, different story uh, that has brought you to this point this evening. 
but you will all have a couple of things in common. One of the things is that with everybody else in the congregation this evening, and with everybody else on this planet Earth this evening, you will have made mistakes, and you will have got things wrong. The Bible calls that our, our sin, and we need His forgiveness. We need His mercy. And He died on the cross, and He paid the price for your sin and for my sin. He took the punishment for our guilt and for our shame and for our wrongdoing. And when we decide to follow Jesus, when we give our lives to Jesus, when we ask Jesus to live at the very center of our lives, we invite him to come in and to cleanse us and to forgive us and to give us a, a whole new way of living. There's a little song that sums it up. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. You see, salt, as well as giving flavor to everything, has a purifying effect. There's probably nobody old enough in the congregation, but if you were to talk to some of the people in that book that uh, Stuart uh, was referring to, uh, decades ago, salt was used as a preser preservative. It was used to keep fish fresh or to keep meat fresh. You would sprinkle it with salt, and then it wouldn't rot. Now, in the same way, Jesus uses the example of salt here to, to remind us that in life, there are moments where we not only need to say yes, we need to say yes to Jesus, but there are seasons in life where we need to say no. We need to say no to temptation. We need to say no to being led down a path that might take us in the wrong direction. We need to say no to sin. We need to say no, certainly, to living our lives with little or no reference to Jesus Christ as Lord. That's why one of the things that was part of your preparation for confirmation was that you were made familiar with the commandments, the Ten Commandments. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods. You shall not make for yourself any idol. You shall not dishonor the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Lord's day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not be a false witness. You shall not covet anything which belongs to your neighbor. Now, these commandments are more than rules. These commandments point us to Jesus. He becomes our rule. He becomes our guide. We choose to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. We choose the good life, the life that places Jesus Christ at the very center. Christian, 2,000 years ago, a man called Paul, who wrote much of the New Testament, said this. He said, I delight in the law of God in my inner being. In other words, we need Christ living in us, Jesus at the very center of our lives, Jesus as our Savior and as our Lord living in us, giving us strength and filling us with the Holy Spirit more and more and more. None of us will live perfect Christian lives, not, not, not one, not any of us. We will get some things wrong. And when we get things wrong, we need to very, very quickly say to God that we're sorry, receive his forgiveness, and get back on track and stay on track, following and loving Jesus all our days. Friends, our forgiveness is so readily available because Jesus died on the cross. He died on the cross for you. He paid the price for your sin so you can be forgiven and you can go on being forgiven all of your life as you choose to follow Jesus and to walk close with him. So those of you who are being confirmed and the rest of us as well, let's stay close to Jesus. Let's love Jesus more and more and more. And as I pray tonight, that God the Holy Spirit would fill your life, I want to encourage you to pray that God the Holy Spirit would go on 
filling your life and that you go on praying that prayer. Be like salt and live the good life. Secondly, in this little reading, we're told to be like light. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good deeds and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. In other words, allow Jesus to lead and to guide your future. Uh, Your future and my future is uncertain, but one thing is sure that Jesus will lead and guide your future if you ask him to be your leader and to be your guide. The other thing about light is that it cheers up a dark room. We're about to move house, and one of the things that we've been doing is choosing lights And uh, there's been days I've wondered, why on earth do we need all of these lights? Well, we need all of these lights in order to cheer up dark rooms. And in the same way, Jesus in our lives brings a sense of purpose and a sense of life that others can see and that others take notice of because our lives become different. Without light, the road is dark. Without light, you'll stumble and you'll fall. Again, that's why we really do need Jesus at the very center of our lives to keep us from stumbling and falling and to show us the way to guide us day by day in life. No one, after lighting a lamp, covers it with a jar or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a stand so that those who enter may see the light. So I want to encourage those who are being confirmed never to stay in dark places, but live your life in such a way that you shine for Jesus. That Here's what I want to say. I I would love you young women and young men to become leaders, godly leaders, who would lead others to Jesus. You know something? We're all leaders. We're all leaders. The question is, how are we leading? And I want to encourage you to lead others to Jesus, to shine, to be different where you need to be different, and to shine so that others can see that Jesus lives in you, that others can see that your character is being shaped by Jesus Christ, that you're living a Christian life, that you're living a godly character, and that you're following Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit will strengthen you to to shine brightly for Jesus. You see, light is visible. Just as you can taste salt, you can see light And so following Jesus and being a Christian will become something that people will notice. Live for Christ and let others see Jesus living in you. Shine brightly for him. Don't hide your light. Don't hide away the fact that you're a Christian man or a Christian woman, but shine brightly for Jesus. And thirdly, This is especially, I think, a word for the rest of the congregation. This is for those who are being confirmed, but it's particularly for the rest of the congregation. You see, we're all family and church together. We're the family of God. And this congregation, every single one of us, have a responsibility to be salt and light alongside those who are being confirmed. Later in the service, those who are being confirmed will make their promises. But you as a congregation will make one promise. Here's what you'll say. I'll ask you this question. I'll say, you have heard these are brothers and sisters, that's these young men 
and these young women who are being confirmed, you've heard them respond to Christ. And then I'll ask you the question, will you support them in this calling? And you'll answer, we will support them. I want to say to you, don't let those be just words that you say this evening. Please pray regularly for these young people who are being confirmed. Please come alongside them in the weeks and months and years that lie ahead. Please put an arm around them to encourage them and to lead them and to guide them. Be salt for them. Be a light that shows them the right path to live by. Prioritize for them the things that need to be prioritized coming alongside them, being an example of what Christian character looks like, praying for them, ensuring too that this parish resources the ministries that this new generation are going to need in the years that lie ahead. Ensure, please, that none of these fine young people are lost, but be salt, be light, to those of us who are older, let's not lose our saltiness. Let's not stop shining brightly, but let's be an example to these young men and to these young women. Let's be family together, church together, building one another up, together staying close to Jesus, together living the good life, not an easy life, but the good life, because we place Jesus at the very, very, very center of our lives. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to continue in a little moment by singing another hymn, and then we're going to have this really special moment of confirmation for these young people. Lord, thank you so much for those that tonight are confirming that they want to follow Jesus. Lord, I pray that above and around each of their lives they would be so visited by your Holy Spirit that you would confirm in them your love for them, that you would confirm in them that you've got good plans and good purposes for their lives, that you would confirm in them that you loved them so much that you died for each of them on the cross, that you would confirm in them that you're alive today to lead and to govern and to guide their lives into the future that you have for them. So, Lord, may they from their hearts and with their own mouths confirm that they're going to follow Jesus all their days. And, Lord God, would you by your Holy Spirit so come down that they would be confirmed in the treasures that you have for them. For we ask this in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop, for opening up God's Word to us and sharing a, an encouragement and a challenge to each one of us. We're now going to stand as a congregation and hem, sing hymn number 147 from Thanks and Praise, The Lord's My Shepherd. Restores my soul, and I will 
trust in you Congregation may be seated. The candidates remain standing, please. Now, I'm going to ask all of you as a congregation to present these young people for confirmation this evening. So, at the end of this question, if you would all shout out, we do. Who presents these persons for confirmation? Great. And I'm going to ask those being confirmed a couple of questions. And again, uh, feel free to, to shout out the answers uh, through your masks. First of all, have you been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? And then secondly, are you ready with your own mouth and from your own heart to affirm your faith in Jesus Christ. And can I ask, have these persons been carefully prepared in their understanding of the Christian faith? I believe they have. Now we come to what's called the decision, and these are the exact same promises that godparents and parents made on your behalf 12, 13, 14 years ago, or whenever it was that you were baptized. So tonight you get the opportunity to shout out the answers yourselves uh, with your own mouths and from your own heart to, first of all, say no to some things and then to say a very resounding yes to following Jesus. In baptism, God calls us from darkness to his marvelous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, I ask, and I ask you to answer this together, do you reject the devil and all proud rebellion against God? Great. Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbor? The next three questions are a resounding yes, yes, 
yes to following Jesus. So, do you turn to Christ as Savior? Do you submit to Christ as Lord? Do you come to Christ the way, the truth, and the life? Now, will the rest of the congregation please stand? And this is the, the bit that I was sharing with you earlier during the talk. You've heard these are brothers and sisters respond to Christ. Will you support them in this calling? We will support them. And now I've got a question that I'll ask each of you individually. And uh, the answer for each of you is, I, I do. So, Amelia, do you believe and accept the Christian faith into which you are baptized? Matthew, do you believe and accept the Christian faith into which you are baptized? Rachel, do you believe and accept the Christian faith into which you are baptized? Ben, do you believe and accept the Christian faith into which you are baptized? Josh, do you believe and accept the Christian faith into which you are baptized? Harry, do you believe and accept the Christian faith into which you are baptized? Joe, do you believe and accept the Christian faith into which you are baptized? Jackson, do you believe and accept the Christian faith into which you are baptized? Daniel, do you believe and accept the Christian faith into which you are baptized? Victoria, do you believe and accept the Christian faith into which you are baptized? Emily, do you believe and accept the Christian faith into which you are baptized? Jamie, do you believe and accept the Christian faith into which you are baptized? Roisin, do you believe and accept the Christian faith into which you are baptized? Does anybody else want to be confirmed? Okay. Brothers and sisters, that's all of us together, I ask that we would profess now together with these candidates the faith of the church. That's the faith into which they were baptized and the faith that they're now going to say with you that is their faith, that they believe, and that they're going to become more and more familiar with the rest of their lives. So, congregation, do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Part of being a Christian is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind and all our strength, and that we love our neighbor as ourselves, that others can see that our lives are full of God, full of God's Spirit, and that we're shining for Him. The next time, I think, captures that. So over to you, Stuart. Thank you, Bishop. We're going to sing together hymn number 517.
Brother, sister, let me serve you. the congregation to be seated and the, con the candidates to remain standing, please. You know, friends, we all desperately need God's presence and God's Holy Spirit and God's strength and God's help on our journey through life. And these uh, responses here just remind us of that afresh. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to ask just that you would, as a congregation, take a moment to pray, and uh, you may not know all the candidates who are being confirmed, but the ones that you know, can I encourage you, just in this moment of stillness, to really pray for them and ask the Lord, to richly, richly, richly bless them, not just tonight, but all their lives, that they would know the riches of God's love and goodness and mercy and courage and strength and peace and joy all their days. And so we pray. Almighty and ever-living God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, was crucified and rose again to break the power of sin and death, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of your Holy Spirit, by whom your servants have been born again and made your children. Grant that in the power of the same Holy Spirit they may continue to grow in the knowledge and likeness of Jesus Christ. Increase in them your gracious gifts, 
the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and inward strength, the spirit of knowledge and godly living. And fill them, O Lord, with the spirit of reverence for you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask the candidates to be seated as well. Uh, and uh, when I come and stand in front of you, if you would just stand for a moment, and I'm going to lay hands on your head uh, and pray that God will really fill your life more and more with his Holy Spirit. Confirm, Harry, O Lord, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue to be yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to the joys of your eternal kingdom. Amen. Amen. Fill him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Watch over him, Lord. May the Lord be your strength and be your shield. Amen. Confirm, Joe, O Lord, with your heavenly grace that he may continue to be yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to the joys of your eternal kingdom. Amen. So more of your Spirit, Lord. More of your presence. The covering of your blood. May the Lord watch over you in all your ways, all the days of your life. Amen. Bless you. Confirm, Rachel, O Lord, with your heavenly grace that she may continue to be yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to the joys of your eternal kingdom. So fill her, Lord, with your spirit. Strengthen her, Lord, with your grace. And hold her in the palm of your hand. Amen. Confirm, Ben, O Lord, with your heavenly grace that he may continue to be yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to the joys of your eternal kingdom. More, Lord, of your presence, of your blessing, of your Holy Spirit's strength, day by day. Amen. Confirm, Josh, O Lord, with your heavenly grace that he may continue to be yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to the joys of your eternal kingdom. So 
to bless, fill, strengthen, resource, and equip. In Jesus' name, amen. Confirm, Victoria, O Lord, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue to be yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until she comes to the joys of your eternal kingdom. Strengthen her, Lord, daily with your strength. Surround her hourly with your presence and lead her in all your ways. For Christ's sake, amen. Confirm, Emily, O Lord, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue to be yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to the joys of your eternal kingdom. And may the joy of the Lord be your strength and his presence your companion. Amen. Confirm, Matthew, O Lord, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue to be yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until he comes to the joys of your eternal kingdom. Do not be afraid, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua chapter 1. Amen. Confirm, Jackson, O Lord, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue to be yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to the joys of your eternal kingdom. Increase your Holy Spirit's presence, your strength, and your good gifts in this man's life more and more. Amen. Confirm, Jamie, O Lord, with your heavenly grace that he may continue to be yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to the joys of your eternal kingdom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his joy and his peace today and always. Amen. Confirm, Daniel, O Lord, with your heavenly grace, 
that he may continue to be yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to the joys of your eternal kingdom. Amen. Strength added to strength to follow Christ all your days. Amen. Confirm rushing, O Lord, with your heavenly grace that she may continue to be yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to the joys of your eternal kingdom. Amen. Day by day, may God guide you and lead you, and watch over you. Amen. Confirm, Amelia, O Lord, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue to be yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to the joys of your eternal kingdom. Amen. Fill her, Lord, with your Spirit. Guard and protect her, Lord, and watch over her. And may your joy be hers always. Amen. It's a real privilege to have prayed for, for each uh, and every one of you. I prayed the same prayer, the same confirmation prayer, and then just prayed a, a different prayer as I sensed God would lead for, for each of you. But may the Lord watch over you. May he protect you. May he keep you close to himself always. May he provide for you those that will speak words of wisdom into your lives. May he shield you from anything that would harm you. And may his blessing be richly yours and be multiplied upon you all the days of your lives. And may those who love you find joy as they watch you fly in the years that lie ahead. God bless you. God bless you. I always get carried away a wee bit at that moment, so I better see what happens next here. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for all these your servants upon whom we have now laid our hands after the example of the apostles to assure them that by the sign of your favor towards them, may your fatherly hand ever be over them. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them. Lead them to know and obey your word and keep them in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, the next little bit as we come towards the end of the service is called the commission. In other words, we don't get to sit here all forever. We've got to go out into the world. Uh, and the world can be a great place some days, 
and a challenging place other days. Uh, and so we go out into the world in the strength that God gives to us. Will the congregation all please stand? Those who are baptized are called to worship and serve God. As we go out into his world, will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread and in the prayers? With the help of God, I will. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. With the help of God, I will. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ? With the help of God, I will. Will you seek and serve Christ in all people, loving your neighbor as yourself? With the help of God, I will. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Now, because of COVID, we're not allowed to go around and give each other hugs or even to shake hands. But if, they, if those who have been confirmed would turn towards the congregation and if you'd give them a big round of applause, I think that would be very appropriate. So just turn around and face uh, all of those scary looking people down the congregation. going to uh, sing what at this point in our service would be the offering hymn. Uh, the bishop mentioned because of the COVID regulations, there are a number of things that we can't do. And one of those is we can't uh, lift an offering uh, during uh, our offertory hymn. However, we do want to encourage you as you leave the church this evening, there will be an opportunity for a retiring collection. Uh, there will be uh, two baskets, one at the tower door, and I hope one uh, over at the wing door. So as you uh, leave this evening, if you want to uh, leave a, a retiring collection, and the money will go to a very good cause. It goes towards the Bishop's Ministry Fund. And who knows, perhaps here this evening, uh, one of you who have just been confirmed may be uh, one of the recipients of that fund as you explore opportunities and how God wants to use you in your gift. You may decide some form of ministry uh, might be that one. Well, we may even have the next bishop of Down and Dermore here. Uh, well, maybe not the next bishop, but a future bishop <laughs> of Down and Dermore here amongst our confirmation candidates. So please do give uh, generously to that uh, at the end of the service. But we're going to remain standing as we sing our offertory hymn, which is hymn number 712, Tell Out My Soul. <laughs> Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord, of number blessings give my spirit voice, tender to me the promise of his word. In God my Saviour shall my heart rejoice. Tell out my soul the greatness of his name. Make known his might, the deeds his arm has done. His mercy sure from age to age the same. His holy name, the Lord Almighty. Tell out my soul the greatness of his might. Pours and dominions lay the glory by. Proud hearts and stubborn wills apart of light. The hungry fed, the humble Tell out my 
I'm going to ask Julie to come, and uh, Julie's going to lead us in, in, in prayer. Uh, and take a couple of moments as well, Julie, just to tell the young folks some of the things that might be happening that would be uh, of interest to them uh, in the diocese as well. Thank you, Julie. I should have said, it, it says on your order of service, maybe that this is Tim. This is not Tim. Tim is the youth officer. Julie uh, works with Tim. She's the children's officer. But Tim's running a camp this evening. So hence, Julie's here instead. What are you, Julie? Yeah, I certainly don't look like Tim. I don't have a big beard. Um, but it is such a privilege to be here with you all tonight. Um, it's such an honor to see you guys being confirmed in your faith. And also, it was such a a joy and delight to turn around and see the parents and family and church family here. Just your faces were lit up whenever you were looking at the candidates. It was just so lovely. And you know, it's it's great to be here with you. Um, as Bishop said, Tim can't be with us because he's down at camp at the minute. And we hope that we would maybe see you guys at some of our camps that we have on. I've just come back up from the children's days that we had on down at the Kilbrony Centre in Ross Trevor and Tim is there now for the next two and a half weeks with our junior, our middle and our senior camp running. Um, and we work as a department, the Youth and Children's Department, DDYC, down in Dromore Youth and Children's. And so if you look us up on Facebook, you'll find us there and on the Instagram and on Twitter and all sorts. Um, and you'll find out all the things that we're up to um, that are available to children and young people throughout the diocese that can connect with us. And as you've just been confirmed, we have a serve program for, for you to, to learn how to lead um, that Tim runs. And we have a leadership weekend that you can go on. There's confirmation weekends, there's youth weekends, there's children's uh, praise parties, there's children's days away. Um, there's lots to be connected into and be a part of. And we would absolutely love to see some of you um, come along. And as the camps progress, we see you then as leading and taking responsibility for that. And it'd be just lovely to see you. So I get the opportunity to pray for you now. Because quite often the service goes on and it's, it's all about the service and confirmation. But let's just take some time now to pray for you as individuals for what you have just done. It's so exciting to see that you have stepped out in your faith in front of your church family to say, yes, Lord, I want you in my life each and every day. So let's pray. Lord, we pray for these young people that have stood before you this evening. Father, we pray that they would know you in their lives every single minute of every day. That you would walk with them. That you would talk with them. That they would know you in their lives. We pray that they would be salt and light in a world that desperately needs to know you. That they would be people of hope, people of love and mercy and justice. We pray that they would be restorers and repairers of your hope and life and faith so that others would know how great you are, Lord. Lord, grow in them your fruit of your spirit, that they may reveal to the world um, all of that as they live in this world, as they work in this world, 
as they go to school in this world, as they live within their families and within their extended families. May they live close to you, Lord. May they live with you for the rest of their lives. And Lord, we pray for their parents and guardians, for their godparents, for their aunts and uncles, and all those who have stood here or are thinking and praying for them right now, that you would encourage them in their faith too, to see these young people stand up and proclaim their faith for you. May they never lose that, Lord. May they continue to carry you in their hearts and minds and spirits and souls wherever they go. And to those around them too, Lord, may your presence be with them and may they know your comfort and your peace upon them always. And now as our Saviour Christ has taught us, so we together pray the family prayer, our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, the glory, glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Julie, for leading us in those prayers. And Julie's no stranger to this place. Uh, a lot of her uh, work on a diocesan level is greatly appreciated here. So great to have you here, Julie. Uh, great to have the bishop and uh, Hilary with us as well. Um, an absolute pleasure. And thank you for leading us in our service uh, this evening, Bishop. A couple of thank yous before uh, we draw our service to a close. Um, I want to thank, uh, uh, well, at this point, I want to thank Neil, who is here, and, and Emma, who sadly can't be here this evening, um, for helping us in our preparation of the young people. I'm sure uh, you, as young people and parents, have appreciated the work and effort that Neil and Emma have put in, and I think uh, they're very deserving of our appreciation, so let's give them a round of applause for that. Um, thank you to Orly, Neil again, who was double jobbing, and to Elizabeth for leading us in our song worship. Orly is covering, uh, the, I can see him looking in the mirror at me, he's covering here this evening as uh, our rector and his lovely wife for taking a well iron break. So Orly, it's always great to have you here, and thank you for leading us with uh, Neil and Elizabeth in our worship this evening. Uh, I want to thank our men at the back. Uh, I think I can refer to Matthew as a man now because he's, I think he's pretty much taller than me now. Matthew was standing where a lot of you guys were standing just three years ago, and now he's helping out on the audiovisual team. Uh, so thank you to uh, David and Matthew uh, for all your work. A lot of it uh, is seen, but also a lot of it goes unseen, so thank you. Um, thank you to our stewards uh, who helped this evening. I'm sure you can appreciate that uh, it's no uh, easy task getting this number of people in the church safely and following the regulations. So thank you to our stewards. And thank you to Jeanette and Edwina who prepared our uh, light refreshments uh, as the families gathered before the service. So greatly appreciate it. And thank you to all of you for being here this evening. I know that there may be others who you, you would have liked to have invited, but because of the regulations or because of distance uh, couldn't be here this evening. So you can go back, please David correct me if I'm wrong in this, but you can go back to the parish YouTube and re-watch the service. Is that correct? Yes. So if there's any folk uh, who weren't able to be here this evening and you want to share uh, this night with them, they can go back and re-watch the service on YouTube and I uh, would, would, would love to offer that as, as an opportunity to you. As our service does draw to a close, we just want to uh, encourage you to maintain uh, social distancing as we leave the building and, and don't sort of linger in the building, wait until you're outside in the, the hopefully still fresher, it was nice and, and sunny and fresh when we were coming in, uh, but do maintain that social distancing until we're out. 
And so I'm going to invite you now to sing our final hymn. It's such an appropriate hymn, uh, particularly as we uh, draw our night together to a close, an appropriate hymn for our confirmation candidates, but an appropriate hymn for each and every one of us who seek to follow the Lord. Uh, I want us to make this something of a prayer this evening as we go, that we would ask the Lord through the words of this hymn to be our vision in all that we do, and in setting our sights on the Lord, we can rest assured that He will guide us sure and true. So I want to invite you to sing hymn 643, Be Thou My Vision. God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, strengthen and establish you in the faith, and the blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be upon you and upon those you love this night and always. Amen. Go out into the world in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.